have the Empress, long time no see, but now I'm here to bring you a, an early morning workout. This is a simple routine that gets you relaxed and at the same time revitalized for your day ahead. I recommend snatching a few moments of time for yourself, perhaps while you're waiting for your coffee to brew, your SO to brush their teeth, or your kids to get their clothes on. Remember, this will only take one song, and it will take me far longer to go through all of the safety cues and posture lessons than it will actually take for us to do the routine together. Please remember that with this or any other workout routine, check with your doctor if you can and make sure you're cleared for exercise. This may prove to be a bit more strenuous than you're used to, or you may in fact find it to be very relaxing and low key. At any rate, be sure to follow all the posture cues and listen to your body. If you feel mild discomfort, you're getting stronger. If you feel pain, stop, rest, and if it's very serious, seek medical attention. This workout takes elements from Fletcher style Pilates, modern belly dance, jazz, and ballet. Now, while it's known that ballet and I are usually arch enemies, it can be very useful if you stay in ergonomic postures and don't push yourself too hard. Now, we'll review some safety cues. You always want to keep your knees over your toes, like so, your knee over your toe. Never let your knee torque inward or outward, so that when we go for a wider stance, a second position in French ballet, or aperto, in Coriosoma style, keep that knee over the toe. If you cannot maintain that level of control, perhaps you should bring your toes inward a bit more to parallel. To protect the lower back, you will always keep the lower abs engaged. This little triangle of your abdomen right here. You want to keep that engaged to keep the lower back lengthened. You can also keep the knees slightly bent to ease pressure on those points as well. You also want to keep the shoulder blades pulled down when you reach overhead. So don't let your shoulder get caught in your ear. Stay pulled down and keep this space open rather than closed. You also want to keep your elbows slightly bent at all times to avoid any sudden jarrings if you lose your balance. If you were to fall, falling into a soft elbow would allow you to cushion rather than actually hurt your elbow further. Choose a song that you like. I recommend a slow one. One of my favorites is the ballad that we'll use today. I want you to learn to feel the musicality of your song. After a while, you will stop focusing so heavily on the movements and begin to dance with the music. Then you'll be in your happy place and you will truly begin Koryosoma, the dancing body. Our first posture is also taken from Horton style dance, a very angular and geometric form of modern dance. You begin standing. Toes pointed straight ahead, knees slightly bent, abs engaged, and shoulder blades down. Roll from the top of the head through the spine with the hips releasing last. When you have touched the floor, reach forward so that your back is parallel to the floor and straighten the knees as much as possible maintaining that parallel back. Now remember here to keep your abs pulled in, your shoulder blades pulled away from your ears, knees slightly bent, and your weight centered between your toes and heel. Take a deep breath, start with the power of your abs, and lift to straight standing. Let the arms fall slightly behind you, still maintaining those engaged abs. And once the arms relax, you can start again with a dive from the crown of the head. When you have completed three of those, 
You will then lift again with the knees slightly bent, shoulder blades down, and abdomen engaged. You will go to the side. Now, here, you must resist the natural urge to make a half moon shape. Instead, you will press that hip to the same side that you bend, and pull back, and to the other side, and pull back. From the high position, come to shoulder height with the arms slightly bent and the shoulder blades still hold downward. You will twist, and here we begin using our belly dance moves. As your upper torso, your shoulders and arms twist as one, you will twist your hip in the opposite direction, almost like wringing out a dishcloth. As my upper body twists, to my right, this hip twists to my left. You will feel your abs working in diagonal tandem to pull your torso as if you're ringing. For the ballet inspired section, you will stand initially with your feet in what is usually called second position, but we will call it aperto, meaning open. You can angle them out as far as your control allows. If that's only slightly off center, that's quite fine. You will work your way up with practice. Now I've been at this a while, so I can go rather far, but I think I'll stay at a modest 45 degrees. Right here, 45 degrees from my center line. As you rise on your toes, Resist the urge to let your foot curl. That is known as sickling, and it's very damaging to your ankles. You want to keep your ankle in line with your calf bones, with the tibia and the fibula. Rise smoothly and use your inner thighs to press together to prevent sickling of the foot. In ballet, this move is known as a plie, but here we shall call it a piega or a folding of the knee. So we are in our aperto position. We shall do a piega. Here is where it is vital that you keep the knee straight over the toes. You're going to engage all the muscles that wrap around the posterior of your leg, your exterior rotators. You're going to go down smoothly as far as you can, maintaining control, and rise back to the top. We will also learn to incorporate a toe raise into the piega. 